Okay, so finishing this up, right now I've got five different layers. I've turned them all to clean black and white, right? Multiply is turned on so I can see what it all looks like. The next step is to clean it up like kind of finally, professionally. And we're going to get rid of all those white pixels. And this is how we do it. Even though we could, if we're in a hurry, just save it now and it will look fine, except that I have like this little blue in there and it's, it's not as clean as it could be. But let's do the quick and dirty thing first. So what do you do? You say file and you save it as and you make sure it's a name that you can find, right? And I'm always going to save it to the desktop. Just like I keep all the things I'm working on for a day on the desktop, I save the work to the desktop and then I organize it into my folder after. So when I'm on this save as screen, I'm always going to hit command D and that's going to navigate it to the desktop. I want you to name it with your first name so we can look it up if it gets lost and send some sort of description of the project. So I have exercise one line art jumble and you save it as a PSD. That's a Photoshop document. Okay, next, you're going to say file, and you're going to do save a copy. Now, in, in PhotoP, this might be a little different. This might be export. So PhotoP, you save it first as a PSD, and then you next you export it as a JPEG. In Photoshop, you say save a copy. You make sure it's going to your computer, not your cloud documents, because you can't save anything other than Photoshop documents onto the cloud and you change the format to a JPEG. So we need to save it in two formats. Photoshop is what's called the working format. That's what saves all the layers for us. It lets us keep working on it, but you can't put a Photoshop document into Canvas. You can't put a Photoshop document to have it show anywhere online. You can only do it as an attachment because they're way too big, right? So we have to make it an online format. And there's a few online formats we'll use but for an online format that is not transparent, that will fill in any empty space with white, we want JPEG. So JPEG, we say save to the desktop. JPEG is a really, really useful online format because it lets you change the size uh, based on a pattern recognition algorithm, right? It's, it's kind of like rounding up or down. And I'm just gonna always have you go to 10 to 12 in terms of quality. It will show you how big that file will be. And so two megabytes is nothing. Usually we don't want to post anything much larger than five megabytes to Canvas. But if I look at my Photoshop document, which is here, which I mark with green, right? And then I'll mark my JPEG, my online document with orange. That's just my system. If I right click and say get info, the size of my Photoshop document is 13 megabytes. Whereas the size of my JPEG compressed and flattened is only 2.1 megabytes. So memory really matters. So now I go to Canvas, right? And I go to the exercise and I follow the directions here, the number one directions to get credit for the work. We don't worry about number two until we're at the end of the semester and we're choosing our final portfolio pieces. So for number one, you click on reply, you put your name, and then you're going to use the, the image post attachment, just like you did for your initial exercises. And then we can drag and drop the JPEG there. It's going to come in way too big because it's made for printing, not for web. So then we just shrink it to look a decent size. And then we hit post, right? And if we want to edit what we've posted, we can always click on our three dots and change it. So if I wanted to put in a description of it, so initial black line art jumble. Done. All right, once it's up, we're, we're going to represent our work, right? So I have the presentation critique question, what tool was most helpful to you in making this your own? And I can still see like that big auto draw hat. So a tool that was really helpful that I need to use more of, in my opinion, is that lasso to delete, to cut away. I also really made use of, of 
free transform and warp. That was really useful to me. So that would be my answer to it. But I think there's still more I can do. Because when I see these and I see one image more than any other, I feel like I want to balance it. So that each, each of the five images or more is contributing something. But it does have this kind of interesting energy to it of fabric and cowboy hat and you have the, the gun holster. So it's, it's on its way. If you want to add color to it, I give you those extra finishing examples here. Things you can do to play with it. But I'm going to show you that quickly here, even though I got it submitted. So we first have to clean it up fully. And the way we do that is we go to the very top and we hold down the option key. And then you go to layer while you're holding down option and you say merge visible. It's something very similar in Photo P, which I'll show in the afternoon class. What that does, it doesn't look like it did anything, but what it did is it created this new layer that's a combined layer with everything. And the reason we held down option was so that it didn't delete the things that it was merging. So I'll show it to you again. It's called merging visible. Go back in my history, it calls it stamp visual there. So if I merged all the visible, I go to the top and I don't hold down option and I just say layer merge visible, all of a sudden it's all in one layer. I've lost all my individual assets. But that's no bueno if I want to go back and change something. right? So instead of that, I hold down option and I do the same thing. Layer merge visible and then it merges it all but it does it on top of my pre-existing assets. And what I will do usually is I'll group all of those into a folder. We'll learn more about this. And then I'll call that my reference. So now I have a clean black and white image that's on normal mode. Now I want to get rid of all the whites and leave only the blacks. And a good way to do that is to actually use your magic wand, uncheck contiguous, and just click on the black. Now this is selecting every black line, not the blue pixels, not the white pixels. And then I'm going to do what's called duplicate, which is Command J, both in Photo P and in Photoshop. Command J will duplicate anything you've selected onto a new layer. And so when I do that, you see all the black pixels, there's no blue left, all came over. Just little areas where it might have been like light gray or something didn't carry over. And you can see that, those grays. Now, if I wanted to go back and get a cleaner version, I could go back to my original, and I can use image adjustments, levels, to darken my darks and lighten my lights overall. And you still have that blue, but then when I click on the, the blacks and then do Command-J, this will be cleaner. Now, the other tool, I'm going to make it just so this is solid black. So image adjustments, levels, that's giving me trouble. There we go, solid black. And now when I click on it, it's all there, Command J. Okay, and then this is a good time to deselect and then save it because now I don't need multiply to have it so they're all showing. It's one clean one. This is good enough for like a clean image. And if I printed it, it would print on white, right? Because it's transparent. I can also keep, make a new layer, fill it with white, put it behind just to, so I can see what's going on. Now I'm going to show you what I think is the most fun. Just like we did an image search for the line art, I can do an image search for a Hawaiian shirt pattern. And just like I did it before, I'm going to use tools and I'm going to, why are my tools not, oh, I want to do images first, sorry, Google image search, tools, and I want to 
have large and I want, I don't know, I'll go to usage rights and I'll say Creative Commons licenses because there should be a few. And I'll get some of these interesting patterns like this one. What's funny is it says it's Creative Commons in the tag, but remember Google lies. But if I open this image in a new tab, and it lies, it was tagged wrong. So forget this, let's go to Pixabay. <laughs> Sometimes the worst things about compositing are just finding good reference. But this is 4,000 by 3,600, plenty big enough. Goes to my downloads. I'm going to drag it onto my desktop. And I'm going to bring it in to my project. Okay. And I'm going to stretch it so that that Hawaiian shirt just f covers my black line art. Like so. Okay, next. Turn that off so it doesn't distract you. Now I'm going to select all those black lines again with contiguous turned off. Just to show you what I'm doing, I'm going to then move that selection onto the Hawaiian shirt. And the only place the Hawaiian shirt isn't behind it is on that arm. So before I do this, I'll deselect and I'm going to transform and warp the Hawaiian shirt just so it stretches like cookie dough. I'm rolling it out the whole space. Okay, now all of it's covered, or I can move it up just a tiny bit. It's like wrapping paper that I'm going to cut this out of. Now I select the black lines from my combined line art layer, and then I turn it off and move the selection down to my smart object, right, of the Hawaiian shirt, and then I do Command J again, just like I did before, but this time it cuts it out of the Hawaiian shirt and saves those pixels instead of the black lines. Now what I like to do is to blend them. So not just that one, but let's also just do a Hawaiian shirt from Google Images. Let's just do a pattern. And it's, it's, almost, it's okay if it's actually not huge too. So let's do something red. Let's do this one. It's not quite a thousand pixels, but it will work. Drag and drop it in. Make it huge. So it covers behind. Select the black lines that I've merged. And then duplicate that Command J from the red layer. Now this is what's cool. I have the red layer line art on top of the, the black and white and red layer line art. And now I can play with the opacity. So I can blend one into the other. Or I can play with the blending modes. Blend one into the other. I think that looks pretty good. And then, if I want, I can add things like a drop shadow. And I can make this look kind of like Arturo Herrera's felt artworks that are hung up on the wall. Let's see, I don't want any noise. There we go. And I would play with the drop shadow just by double clicking on my line art and then adding these kind of effects. We'll be learning about that. So these are some of those options that are talked about in the exercise directions. Let me make that drop shadow a little less strong. Just so it gives a nice crisp edge. And remember, this is print quality, more than just screen quality. So it should look pretty, pretty sharp and clean by the end. So now I'm just going to say File, Save, just to update it. So now my PSD is colored. And just to show you the difference, I'm going to turn off the background. And then I'm going to say File, Save a Copy. And this time, instead of it being a JPEG, I'm going to save it as our second type of online format, which is a PNG. The reason you save a PNG, even though it takes up a little bit more memory, is it will support transparency. 
So a JPEG would automatically fill the